everybody. Hello! And welcome back to another episode of Translating Love. I'm Danny. And I'm pre puberty Wolfgang. <laughs> this is... This is a new version of me. A new version? A new version. A new version. Of Virgin? Me. Version. Virgin. <laughs> a new version of me. Mm-hmm. You will meet this version of me every second podcast. Ooh. <laughs> Might be a little too much. <laughs> okay. No, Maybe sorry. Every, it's me. It's me. Fifth. It's me, normal, manly man, Wolfgang. Wolfie. It's you, Wolfie. It's me, man, Wolfie. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, the man, Wolfie. Oh, okay. Yeah. Duh, man. Duh, man. Today we're back with a new episode. Indeed, but and <laughs> uh, this is just a disclaimer because the last time we did one that kind of touched on this topic, I forgot to put in a disclaimer until the end. Oh, yeah. So, if you are my family, like my brother or my mom or my dad or, you know, aunts, uncles, cousins, whatever. It might be a little. We're talking about sex. Not super detailed, obviously, and it, but it's still more around the sex. topic, but it's... right. So. But if that makes you uncomfortable because we might touch a little bit on our sex life, maybe skip this one. Yeah. But if you're interested and if you're not a prude, <laughs> then keep listening and enjoy. Um, also, before you, before we start the, the podcast, we should just say thank you to all our listeners and to all the people who are new. Um, to all the people who just listened to this one specific episode, you might want to check out others because they're funny too. Especially the poop episode. I mean, there's no poop episode. Yeah, it's but episode we 22. We do talk a lot about poop in episode 22. So if you're into poop like <laughs> we are, you should listen to that episode. And if you're not into poop, then you... listen to that episode and then you will be. Because I got to tell you, I used to not be into poop. I hated talking about it. It made me really uncomfortable. Yeah. And then I met this guy and... He got me really excited about talking as, about poop. As every bodily function, we should talk about it. Yeah. We are just yum, human animals in this. Human? Human. Human? Human. Humid human animals in this crazy world. And we should talk about poop and other bodily functions. Let's end the stigma of poop. <laughs> Hashtag end the stigma of poop. Um, it's going to be a movement. Hashtag make poop normal again. No. That's too much, too, too, no, that's a bad no. Let's say <laughs> end the stigma of poop. End stigma of poop. That's a good one. Hashtag end stigma of poop. End poop stigma. End poop stigma. Yeah, I like that too. Hashtag end poop stigma. Okay, let's do that. But yeah, thank you for listening and thank you for sharing. And if you haven't shared the podcast yet, please do so because it helps us a lot. And it also helps us if you subscribe. Or follow whatever, or follow it's, called whatever it's called in your podcast app. app. And also if you can rate it on either Apple or Stitcher. Do you have to be a user of Apple to <clears> rate <throat> or a user of Stitcher The thing is I have, you have to be a user of Apple. Oh, no, you don't have to be an yeah, Apple user. But, I mean, most people who listen on Apple Podcasts, they usually is on the phone, mm-hmm. so they're all, they are locked in, obviously. No, but if you don't use Apple Stitcher, you don't have Stitcher, to be a user. You can just rate Yep. Through Stitcher. So there's no excuse, people. No excuse. And if you don't use Stitcher, just go Google Translating Love Stitcher and, and rate it. Do it. Do it. But yeah, let's start the podcast now. <laughs> the, the podcast episode? Let's start the episode now. <laughs> nice. And so like... Diabolical. Naughty, naughty. That's naughty. Yeah, it's naughty. Now let's talk about sex. We can't sing the song because we did that the Baby. last time. Baby. <laughs> let's talk about you and me. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about all the things. That's not the lyrics. No, fuck, what is it? <laughs> what is it? it just goes, let's talk about sex. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's talk about sex. And... Probably not a lot of uh, you guys know that sex is an acronym and stands for socially exciting, exciting xylophone. 
<laughs> no, obviously not. It's called. It's, it's a sexy. No, it's sexual and, xylophone. No, it's sexual encounter xylophone. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> and that again is an acronym. <laughs> What is xylophone an acronym for? <laughs> Again, <laughs> xylophone. Ellipsis. No. That doesn't oh, yeah. start with a Y. <laughs> Wait, what is a Y word? Yellow. YOLO. YOLO. Which is an acronym. <laughs> for, you see, it's like acronym after acronym after acronym. It's like inception acronym. <laughs> Oh my god, oh, it's so stupid. Okay, let's let's stop the stupidness and let's go into the podcast episode. <laughs> <laughs> you see, we are very uh, mature. Mature? Mature. Talking about the sex that people have. The, <laughs> the, 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 what is it called? The mating. <laughs> process or the the, the intercourse coitus. Ooh, coitus. I coitus like coitus like koi fish but it's coitus <laughs> <laughs> do you think koi fish make coitus it's koi fish coitus <laughs> that's that's a good name for a band by the way and if you're forming a band right now you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> hello we are koi fish coitus and today we're playing our our number one hit xylophone love <laughs> Coitus coituses. <laughs> Koi fishes coituses. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, God. Anyway, sex. Let's talk about sex. Oh, sex. So, um, so sex is an interesting thing. First of all, we do it because it's fun. And second, we do it because it brings us children, which saves human race. Which is kind of like we have to kind of mate and, and procreate and make <laughs> babies. Otherwise, we would die or our species would die. It's also, it's, 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 I don't know, there are two sides to the whole sex thing. Um, and from our standpoint, I mean, we are married. We're together for now. I don't even know how long. Uh, no, I know. Um, you do? Yeah, I do. What is it? How four, long? four years. Yeah, good yeah. job. So it's not that long, um, but it is a, a significant. It is. It, it, it is. A, it's it, a significant amount of time. Thank you. That's what, that's what I wanted to say. say. <laughs> my tongue was in my way, um, and it's actually the longest I've been with someone. So high five on that. that uh, no, wait, really not lame. again. Yeah, there we go. That was better. So, and. Obviously, you compare sex with sex or sex with sexual encounters or your sex life with maybe a single sex life or the sex life of someone who is like has been in a relationship for a long, long time or whatever. So your sex sex life is always different or, or at least, I don't know. I, don't I mean, know it's different it. when you're single. It's different when you're like from relationship to relationship yeah and yeah and i'll also i don't know i think the 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 if, at least from my standpoint and from what i know about it and from what i've experienced about it sex is the best when you've been with someone longer and you know someone better but can i ask has that always been the case for you yeah no i mean Yes. Like in your last relationship, no. was the sex better towards no. the end? Because in my experience, the sex was like terrible by the end of my last relationship. Yeah. I mean, not terrible. Disclaimer it wasn't the best in my last relationship. Um, just overall. Yeah, it was just overall. It wasn't. But uh, I mean, I think there were just compa compatibility issues mm -hmm. and. Just a lot of underlining things that didn't work out. And so uh, on both sides, obviously. So I think that was a big thing. So the ground structure of the whole relationship wasn't that fundamental. And sure, that doesn't mean that your sex life is not good. It, because there are cases where the sex is awesome, but the relationship part is shit. Mm -hmm. Or the other way around. Um, but yeah, it didn't, it didn't just fit. But... But from like comparing this relationship to other com relationships, I see that our sex got better over the mm -hmm. years, I think. 
And I, I think a big part of that is because we keep talking about it and we are open about it and we try to, you know, not, uh, I don't know. I don't know. We just we just openly communicate about mm-hmm. it, I think. And I think that's a big key point. Well, I think that there's a lot of, um, and we were reading a little bit about this, but there's a lot of stigmas based around sex when you're single versus sex when you're married. Yep. And how a lot of people say, like, I mean, everyone's heard it, that there's like the jokes and stuff like, oh, we're married, so we barely have sex anymore. Like in, in like sitcoms or whatever, they always make jokes like that. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's kind of stupid. And how like, oh, you're lucky if you get sex once a month or once a year or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. But so I think there's like already kind of a negative stigma around it where people just assume that once you get married, you have sex less. But I think that you that's... You have less sex, isn't that... Uh... Accurate way to say it. No, it's either way. It's fine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and learn something today. <laughs> um, but where was I going with that? Uh, that they have less sex, or that yeah, but that's like the stigma that's around yeah. it. But I think, um, people are also scared or concerned about losing the spark, which we've also talked about. Yeah. Where it's like you have this crazy, passionate, sometimes very frequent sexual encounters with somebody when you're first with them. I mean, sure, and yeah. that lasts, you know, like, like the butterfly phase. And mm. that lasts for however long it lasts. And then I think a lot of people get nervous, like, when that ends, what does that mean? But if, and, you, if you think about that, um, I think that um, if you compare your first sexual encounters with someone who you have been with, then usually the sex gets better or at least, um, I don't know. I mean, I would say better because you, you, you at get first, to know each other right, and you at know first what it's kind of awkward and... and it's also like you're hiding things maybe because you're not that comfortable mm-hmm. yet with someone, lights out, for example, stuff Although like in, that. in our case, that was a little different. I think in our case, we were pretty, like our first time I think was pretty um, fantastic. I mean, yeah. Obviously, I mean, look at me. <laughs> no, but but uh, but still, I compared to now, I would still say that we we came a long way. Sure, and the thing is, I I would say that our sex is better now than it was too. in the beginning. I mean, it was maybe more frequent at the beginning. Yeah, but but I think that's but that's also thing. normal, and it's still, I mean, it's still pretty frequent for how long we've been together. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. So, and it's it's one of those things, like, the more you get to know each other, it's basically our point is that married sex, in our opinion, is way better than sex when you were single or sex when mm-hmm. you were with somebody, but not, like, married or something. The, the, the shitty thing is I can't compare. I never had a one-night stand. I never had, like, a, a sex encounter with one person that never had sex with them again. I never had a one-night stand, but I had, like, flings with people mm-hmm. where it would be, like, well, we hooked time. up. A couple of times, couple but never times. were together. But that I, I don't have the comparison to that, but I always imagined it to be super awkward and weird, kind of, at least mm-hmm. afterwards. Oh, you mean like with somebody you don't know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never had that either. And and also, I, the, the thing is, I can't see that as being awesome or good or satisfying. Even. But you also have to think about that. It was slightly after, I mean, sure, it was happening because people would still do it with, at like bars and stuff, but mm. that was kind of like the... The whole thing with like Tinder and all of that stuff where you meet somebody. It's still going on, right? No, I know. But when that all started, we were kind of at an age where at least you and I, I guess, so there are some people our age who still use it, but I think we were kind of at an age where we were both in relationships and we were both. Mm, Yeah, sure. So it's not like we were looking for something. Mm, That's true. That's true. And so I think that's become more of a normal to like hook up with a stranger. Also, what is Tinder? I wouldn't know. I'm a little. Sh- I'm a little church boy. A church boy. I don't know what Tinder is. What you, is the Tinder? Do you sing in the choir? I sing in the choir. Can you sing us a song from? Oh, <laughs> you, you. I can, that's, that's it. I kind of have so many notes. There's only four notes in that song. Yeah. Oh, your voice just changed. Did you go through puberty? No. I'm still a little. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the big church boy now. <laughs> <laughs> they, they call me church man. 
we're so off topic in this episode. <laughs> uh, no, I know what Tinder is. I know you know what Tinder is. Uh, but, but I also prefer Grinder. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, I, I mean, the, the thing is, I think that sex gets better the yep. more meaningful it is and yep. the more like close you are with somebody like the closer you are with yep, somebody yep. it just gets better because then you start thinking about like over time and this still happens with us over mm -hmm. time you start to be more comfortable saying things like hey i actually like it like this or can you do this instead yeah. or can you try yeah, this yeah, yeah. where as in the beginning of a relationship you're not you're nervous to yeah, yeah. ask for the things that you yeah, want yeah you want to get like super comfortable and then mm -hmm. you feel comfortable to share yeah. like i like it up the ass or <laughs> loop my earlobe or or loop my earlobe yeah or pull my testicle hair you know stuff like that <laughs> <laughs> common just those, not weird those stuff totally like common things that yeah happen, yeah yeah i mean sure I, I think a big thing being in a relationship being married or even having a child is that you have to make time for right. sex kind of because, I mean, you work, you have stuff to do, you have... Well, and you also get into a routine with You get into a routine. Uh, there is, like, I mean, daily life in the way and making a plan to have... I mean, we don't like to do that. Like, we don't like to call it like that. But on the other hand, in one of the articles that we read, I actually found this kind of interesting because typically we don't like to say we're going to plan to have sex tonight or sex tomorrow night because then both of us feel like it's an obligation. And so then we're, I don't know, it, you know, it feels then a little mm. weird, like it has to happen. Yeah, also I don't like when you arrange that with my secretary and she knows that, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, he's free tonight. Sure, yeah. he can have sex. Yeah. He can re have relations with you tonight. Yeah. But... In the article I read, I liked how they said that you can do that because they said planning it can also be sexy. Yeah. Where you can plan it and say you're going to do it, but then but the thing like is we do flirt that. with each right. other throughout the day and like it's like foreplay way before it even happens. So you start to like get excited about it and mm. you can look forward to it, and it's more an anticipation than it is a chore. Send each other nipple pics and stuff like that. Sure. And my nipple is hard for you tonight. It's already lactating. Your nipples yeah. lactate? Sure. When I sweat. <laughs> no, um, but I mean, we do that kind of like, not all the time, but sometimes mm -hmm. we do that, which is weird because we didn't plan to do that. But we do that sometimes. What do you mean we didn't plan to do that? Like it? we make those those funny little plans, like those in anticipating texting mm -hmm. and stuff like that. We do that sometimes. Yeah. Which, which, which totally works and it's a fun way to to um spice it up a spice little bit. it up a little bit yeah should we take a quick pause a quick pause yes yeah, so i can a pause a roo a pause a roo or as the old romans called it <laughs> fuck <laughs> let's come up with like a good latin word pauses sure let's do that okay And we are back. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, we're back. Can you do it in a British accent now? Oi, mate. <laughs> we are back now. We just watched the telly. <laughs> Harry Potter was on with a cup of tea and some biscuits. <laughs> you like a scone, mate? I think in England they say a scone. I, think, I don't think it's scone. I think it's scone. It's gone. You want a scone? A deli is Harry Potter. <laughs> I'm sorry. What's bad about sorry. Harry Potter? I'm just sorry for everyone who have offended. I, I am so bad at accents. <laughs> Although your southern is my favorite. Except I'm really good at Russian. Duh. Russian is good. Ruski. But that's all you really say. But that's all I can do. <laughs> so no, I'm not really good at Russian either. <laughs> yeah. So. But I'm actually good in Aust like Arnie. Or because you're Austrian. Yeah, that's true. That's not really an really accent can. if it's your accent. That's true. Get to the chopper now. <laughs> Put the cookie down. Put it down now. <laughs> it's going to be so loud. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry for everyone who just died on the headphones. Okay. Back to the sex theme. 
there are a few points you should be aware of. Or those are just like some little things you should remember or should be aware of if you want to like elevate your sex life or at least keep like it things healthy. that are important to keep right. a healthy sex life yeah for example a, a good thing is like to be accepting of of each other's flaws and quirks everyone I mean, has those little things i like, personally super... don't like the word flaws but because i, I don't like flaws yeah i don't think we're flawed though I... danielle flaws are the thing that makes us different and therefore they're yeah. awesome but i wouldn't say flaws because it sounds so negative it doesn't it does no it doesn't it, it's 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 it, like saying imperfections that's also like that nice either. i don't like that either. i don't like perfect i don't there's no perfect exactly but i also think there's a flaw yeah i have a lot of flaws <laughs> i have flaws in my pants you have flaws, oh those are fleas floss in Sorry. your teeth <laughs> things in my pants and anyways yes okay. but be accepting of, of yeah. things that make your partner unique that's what i'll, I'll I mean, phrase it that way yeah and a big thing is also date nights yes we are really bad at that date nights fun and playfulness i mean fun and playfulness we're good at we're not we're like the most miserable serious sad serious <laughs> depressed people i contemplate life all the time write really dark thoughts on my black uh a wall when we when we like our our bedroom talk is like if you would die tomorrow <laughs> would you like that and i'm like yes i actually would like that please god let me die tomorrow <laughs> anyways no fun and playfulness we're fine uh but date nights we're not so good at so we need to get better at that but yeah, but the thing actually, is, even if you just schedule once a month it doesn't have to be once a week or no. once every two weeks once a month is enough just Take some time, schedule some time where it's just the two of you doing yeah. something that you don't normally do. So not because just I don't, sitting at home. I have to say, I, I, I don't like to do that right now. I'm no, right super, now I don't either. I don't really want to go out if it's not necessary. However, you can plan a date night that doesn't require going to like a restaurant or where oh, there's really? public, pe public places and stuff. Tell me more. Yeah, you can, for example, make a little picnic, and mm. then the two of you can go to Where like your favorite that? spot and 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 do that. Picnic. You can buy a picnic. Yeah, and where can I buy it, and how much is it? Um, the whole point is that you make it, and then I it's out of love. I thought you're reading an ad. No. No. Oh. Or yeah, can, that sounds fun. Yeah, that's nice. Or you can plan a a date day where you go like hiking or something. That can also be a date. Oh, we did that. That's nice. You know, but yeah, make time for that. That's important. Um, we did that like three weeks ago, but you weren't part of that. Yeah, but I wasn't there. I was working. <laughs> yeah. Um, love for each other. I mean, obviously, it's yeah. kind of an obvious. I mean, if there's no love, if there's no love, then boning is not that much fun. Nope. I mean, it can still be fun, but it's not passionate, and it's yeah. not like. I mean, phys yeah, physical attraction is also something which it's important. does not mean that you need to be ripped or have a model no, figure or whatever. No, it just means you it need to be physically to attracted with, to your partner. Right. And that can also be uh, achieved through your personality, through your sure. humor, through your And honestly, quirks, I think it should be more about that than the flaws, actual physical appearance. Through your big dick or your small <laughs> dick or your normal size dick. But the thing is, I think if you're already, I think that physical attraction, like in the sense where you're actually attracted to how somebody looks, I think that that's important. For me, it's not top of my list, but it's important. That's but, why she's with me. <laughs> oh, I wait. Mean, that's just not true. <laughs> I think you're super sexy. Oh, thank you. But. I think so too. You think you're sexy too? Yeah. Most of the time. Except when I call you, that when I say that you're sexy, you're like, I don't know. No, I'm not. <laughs> That's how I sound most of the time. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's really sexy. Okay. Um, but I think it's important. And, and with that, when you get to know somebody and when their, their other traits start to come yep. through, yep. you become even more attracted to them if you like those traits. <laughs> yep. But like your humor made me more attracted to you than than i was already which i already was and the weird thing is i'm not even funny <laughs> but um okay and that wasn't funny i so. know <laughs> um yeah and we, we talked about the communication like meaningful and productive communication and just being open with each other and yeah not just your daily conversation your yeah. daily how was your day or you know silly talk or whatever but actual like deep conversations 
we for example have like a book which we need to do more often it's supposed to be done in 30 days it's like a 30 day couples workbook we started or something two years ago and it strikes up conversation and it's a really good book yeah but we just started are really two years ago. two years ago we started that book and we are not even halfway but it's through. so good but we're not even halfway through. but it is good we enjoy it's, it every time it we do good. it but it's, it's every three months every four months we do it <laughs> we really enjoy it okay but it's really nice but things like that to it like strikes up conversation and there's different themes and then there's questions that you ask each other and it's kind of nice i like that and also i mean we talked about the two just make time for each other and being yeah. willing to like set time aside for each yeah. other exactly yeah but there's also another uh big point um and that is initiate more often yes basically don't rely on your partner to be the one to initiate intercourse <laughs> right so if you want to have sex do the ask then it. you initiate get it Get sex. No. <laughs> no, but if you want... You call now. <laughs> you can get two you... sex for four ninety nine. <laughs> two sex? <laughs> two sex. And if you call right away, you get one sex on top of that for four ninety nine and a kitchen uh, knife. Sorry. And a kitchen knife? Yeah. I don't it's think super, that should be combined. It's a good deal. Free sex plus a kitchen knife. <laughs> and the kitchen knife is already sharpened and it's supposed to, to be sharp all the time. So it's a self sharpening knife. That's a good deal. Four ninety nine plus shipping at sixty ninety nine. Sixty. So a total of sixty four ninety nine. Still not bad for three sex and a knife. Yeah. <laughs> so if you but consider the call is, now. <laughs> the point is, if you feel like having sex, don't just like lay there and wait for your partner to maybe initiate. If you feel like it, then you initiate and. Even if it means, like, you initiated the last time, and so you're laying there like, oh, I initiated the last time, so I'm not going to this time. Right. That's stupid. That's if you stupid. want to, just just try to initiate it. If they don't want to, they'll tell you. But there should be an equal amount of right. initiation. Right. And I don't like how it's phrased in the article that we read, where they say that women particularly need to feel loved and connected in order to have the desire for sex. I don't necessarily think that that's true. I do think what's true is that typically, in my experience, women like more of like the the hand holding, like not to just jump right into sex, but more mm. of the foreplay and more of um, because it doesn't things don't work that quickly but down there where it's like but it's overall, ready to go. But it's right overall, away. I think that's that not some, that's not something for just the bedroom. You can be like you should be intimate with intimate your partner in, when you're not right having sex. Yeah, just hand ho handing hold. Hold. Handing holds. Handing holds. <laughs> the old handing holds. <laughs> Not the old holding hands, obviously. Um, and or like putting your arm around her. And the same goes the other way around because men like that Not too. Sure. Um, and if you don't like tickle that, tickle her can... funny bone. <laughs> lick her knee. Oh, please don't lick my knee. That's a little weird. I always lick your knee. In you public, like that. that'd be weird. Yeah. Don't Everyone like does it. I don't like that. <laughs> Everyone does it. It's the new thing. But we don't want to like gender stereotype or anything and say that women like this and men like this or no. men don't like this. Anybody can like those things. Right. And so in anybody can also not like those things. Shaving There's plenty of well, we're not gonna talk about that again. <laughs> But, anyone... but that can be an intimate thing, too, if you shave your, your anuses. We're not doing that. <laughs> Stop bringing it up. It's not going to happen. <laughs> I'm just saying that's an intimate thing. You bring it up so thing. often that it makes me feel like that's you secretly just... telling me that you want me to shave no, no, your no. anus I... or that you want to shave mine. And I don't want either of those things. <laughs> Dude, I just bring it up because your mom spilled or puked out the coffee when I said it the last time. And yeah, I hope she, she just did. She was listening to the... The one episode that we were talking about something like that, and then he said something about we could shave each other's anuses. And my mom texted me, and she said that she spit out her coffee because she was laughing so hard. <laughs> that made me laugh so hard. So I hope, Patty, you just spit out your beverage again, and you're welcome for that. Yeah, it's um, probably just. But coke. back to the not gender specifying or yeah. or being gender specific because there is no such thing. No, it's just some people like more like intimacy in public some people don't like it at all um but if your partner enjoys it then then maybe try to do that for them more often yeah and also for the people who don't have an, don't have an anus <laughs> you can totally shave someone else. 
<laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm so stupid. Uh, okay. Um, but yeah, for the end, we prepared some tips that can help you um, with like having a healthier or better or more frequent sex life. Yeah. So the first one, being grouchy or ignoring your spouse during the day or your significant other um, hurts your chances of having a positive lovemaking experience that evening. Also, lovemaking or sex or intercourse or coitus, whatever, does not just have to be in the evening. Sometimes oh, yeah. it's fun to do it in God, the morning. God, God said on this. I don't think God ever said yeah, anything about that. Yeah, in the Bible, it's on page 43. Page 43. <laughs> um, you know, every Bible's a little different, so not every... <laughs> <laughs> it's on page 43. <laughs> and God said, you only, humanity shall have sex only at night. That's where they're not being seen, and that's good. <laughs> Something like that. Sure. Bible quote, the end. <laughs> okay. But just in general, if you're grumpy or grouchy or like snappy with your spouse, it's, yeah. your lovemaking experience might not be as enjoyable. Mm -hmm. So try to be nice. Yeah. I recognize that abstinence now and then can be beneficial that your relationship... To your relationship. Oh, to, sorry. <laughs> Wait, let me read that again. Recognize that <laughs> abstinence now and then can be beneficial to your relationship. You may uh, find that it builds anticipation and start to lust after one another more. It's about equality before quantity. Oh, quality. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so bad. It's about quality. So basically what that means, can you sum it up? I could just reread the thing. No, now. sum it up. Um, Essentially... It's okay to, like, not have sex for a while. Right. Sometimes it's good. You don't have to, like, always have sex three times a week or always have sex twice a week or whatever, whatever. It doesn't matter. If you don't have sex for a while, that can also be a good thing sometimes. Yeah. Because it builds the anticipation for the next time that you do. And like it says at the end here, it's about quality before quantity. Mm -hmm. So if the quality of your lovemaking is better, but it's not as often, that's also okay doesn't have to be a certain amount per yep, week to yep. count or something That's also stupid. everyone who thinks i can't read i can read sorry can you yeah it's really dark in here oh sure yep it's actually like super bright in here the sun is shining yeah through. it's like really so i try to i try again okay okay remember that sex is not going to be perfect each time don't compare your sex life to the pol <laughs> <laughs> don't move the paper <laughs> don't compare your sex life to the portrayals you see in movies or television i think that's, that's a good point that's a good point because you especially in series you see like those single yeah, guys everything. who fuck around and have the best time of their life and it's I so mean, honestly, funny in so every good. in every movie and or series movies, where there's yeah. sex it seems to be so intense and, and so and passionate intimate and, and, yeah, yeah. and sometimes like super dirty or sometimes like really long yeah yeah and the thing is, it doesn't have to be. Sex isn't always long. Sometimes it's a couple minutes, and that's also fine. Well, a couple of seconds. And sometimes I mean, it's longer, and that's also fine. Most of the time, it's a couple of seconds, and that's fine. That's not true. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a movie, it's a television, it's not real life, so don't it's do not it. Not real life. And that same goes for. They're porn. exactly like showing those things in that way because it's so like it's nice to watch and it's yeah. it's exciting to watch that, but. It's not typically how yep. someone's sex life is. I read this one. Yep. Um, take good care of yourself. A healthy sex life intersects with your overall physical, emotional, and mental health. I mean, that's a good point, too. If you don't feel good, if you're sick, if you have mental issues, mental health issues mm -hmm. or problems, or just going through a rough patch, I mean, especially right now with COVID and with the whole... Uh, election coming up in the US and with a glo global warming or global climate uh, climate change and stuff like that it's it's yeah it's not always easy to like yeah. and then again balance work life with private mm -hmm. life and maybe kids and stuff like that it's not super easy and juggling that all is is a hard task yeah so keeping or oh, taking care of that stuff uh, means also a better sex life or a healthier sex life. Well, and on kind of the other side of it too, sometimes you might, if you, it can go both ways. If you have 
not that much sex because of anything else going on in your life, that can also affect you negatively because sex can also be a release for all of those things that you're feeling and all of the, the things that are kind of like weighing down on mm. you. So it can also be super helpful. Um, and also for your relationship, I think that's yeah. a good thing because if you kind of abstain from having sex for so long because of whatever else is going on mm. in your private life, mm your partner may start to take that as it's something wrong with them or you're not yep. attracted to them anymore or things like that. So it's good to try to like get yourself over those humps, no <laughs> pun intended, um, <laughs> to, humps. to I don't know. No, I totally agree. Keep your sex life alive throughout all of that stuff because it, totally in the end, it's also good for you totally and good agree. for your mental health to do those things. But also don't force it. That's the yeah, other side obviously. of it. Obviously. Obviously. If if you're really not in the mood, then don't force it. And because that can hurt if it's dry, you know, <laughs> for both. So don't force it. Okay, yeah. I think we've we've covered that thing at least. Yeah. Just the tip. <laughs> <laughs> covered it with a rubber. Uh, <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah. No, I mean it's a big, it's a big, long, it's pretty hard, hard topic. <laughs> No, and sometimes it can be a little slippery. Yeah, it's a slippery slope, <laughs> and it can be really tight sometimes. Um, it doesn't work as well. That's true. Uh, no, but I mean, it's <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a it's a big topic, um, and it's not super easy to cover it all. And maybe we do like a follow up on that if if you like if you like what we are talking about, uh, minus the banter and minus the stupid stuff we talked about. That's fun too. Um, but also, I mean, we have an exciting announcement. We do? Yeah. We're launching a poop podcast. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> Dedicated to all the poops. <laughs> the, the big, the small, the brown, the yellow, the, the hard, the, red, the soft. The hard, the so especially the hard poop. That's our favorite Not the poop. too hard poop. Though. Not like the, the firm. Not the painful. <laughs> the firm, still formable. Probably don't have to wipe after, but you still do because, come on, hygiene. Poop. Right. That poop. That poop. <laughs> so we're excited to um, bring you the poop podcast yeah. in a couple of weeks. It's called Translating Poop. <laughs> no, it's just called. Come the on, that's good because it's then it's called you can... the Poopcast. No, I don't like that. Are you sure? No, I don't like that. I don't know. No, it's only I don't like four that. minutes long, and you can listen to it while you have a poop, <laughs> and you shouldn't sit longer on the pooper for four minutes anyway. So it's perfect. But I don't and like a it. doctor already recommended our <laughs> podcast, even though it's not out yet. Dr. Oetker said it's the perfect amount to digest my food. <laughs> Dr. Dung. <laughs> Dr. Dung. Oh, my God. Okay. Obnoxious. I'm out of sh shitty idea of poopy ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to go put him to bed now. <laughs> he needs to sleep. I am a small little boy, and I need to go to bed now. But first, I need my milk. No, we don't drink my milk. My teddy milk. No, we don't drink milk. My almond Bitty. milk. Pity. 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 <laughs> okay. No. We're going to stop referencing things and just... We're, 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 go. we're done now. We're sorry. So, we're so, so sorry. We're sorry. Uh, thank you for listening, for tuning in again. Thank tuning. you for tuning in. Thank you for listening to the old podcast program. Even when we're talking about the old brown soup. Uh, yeah. And also thank you for all the good feedback from the last episode with your dad, yeah. Joseph or Joe Steiner. Um, and yeah, also we are probably launching uh, an instagram for the podcast yeah so stay tuned about that and you will probably find it in the description below yep soon or now that's that's it yeah that's it we're gonna go shave each other's anuses <laughs> yes finally <laughs> okay bye bye <laughs>